Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Common Ports and Protocols. Today I'm going to do an introduction to ports and protocols, and then we're going to talk about some common ports and protocols. There's a whole lot of information to cover, so let's go ahead and begin this session. And of course, I'm going to begin with an introduction to ports and protocols. So let's start with ports. Now, ports are a method of specifying what protocol or service to access. Protocols and services usually use default ports so that they are easy to locate. Now, there are 65,536 individual ports that are available to be used for communication, kind of. Port 0 is reserved, so in actuality, only ports 1 through 6,535 are available. Now, the first 1,024 ports are specifically assigned to protocols and services, and these are called well-known ports. If you would like to take a look at the list of well-known ports, you can go to www.iana.org forward slash assignments forward slash port dash numbers. They have a listing of all of the well-known ports. Now ports can also be thought of as kind of like a phone number extension. The IP address is the main number you are trying to reach. The port number is the extension that you want to access at that main phone number. Now let's talk about protocols. Extending the telephone analogy, protocols can be thought of as the language that the two applications on either side of the connection agree to speak once the connection is made. You know, press one to continue in English. That would be like the protocol. Protocols translate requests into services. Most protocols use default ports, but some protocols must be user configured for the port that they use. So something to keep in mind, ports are not protocols and protocols are not ports. Even though the two are closely associated, they are not the same. Ports are used to request services or applications protocols are the service or application that is being requested. When a requester seeks to connect to a specific port, the requester is dynamically assigned its own port number, and it listens to that dynamically assigned port for the response. This also allows for computers to have many concurrent connections. Now let's move on to some common ports and protocols. Before I dive into this, you will see that some ports are bold. These are the ports that you need to know. You need to know all of the protocols, but you only need to know some specific ports. Now there's a whole lot of information here, and if you need to pause, feel free. I won't be offended at all. So let's start at the top with FTP, File Transfer Protocol. Now that's a standard protocol for transferring files between computer systems. It's assigned to port 20 and to port 21. Nowadays, it mostly just uses port 20. Then we have SFTP, Secure File Transfer Protocol, and it's an encrypted version of FTP which uses Secure Shell for its encryption. It's assigned to port 22. Then we have SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. This is the protocol that's used to transfer email from a client to an email server. It is also used to transfer email between email servers. By default, it's assigned to port 25. Then we have POP3, Post Office Protocol version 3. This is the protocol that's used by clients to retrieve their email from email servers and it's assigned to port 110. Then we have IMAP, Internet Message Access Protocol. It is also a protocol used by clients to access email on email servers, but it allows the client to organize email on the server into folders and it leaves a copy on the email server. It's assigned to port 143. Then we have HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, the one that everybody should be familiar with. This is the primary protocol used to transfer data over the internet and to request web pages. It's assigned to port 80. 
Then there's HTTPS, Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. It's the primary protocol that's used to securely transfer data over the internet using SSL or TLS, so Secure Socket Layer or Transfer Layer Security technology. In actuality, SSL should no longer be used. You should only be using TLS. By default, HTTPS is assigned to port 443. Then we have DNS, Domain Name System. This is the protocol that is used to map computer names to their IP addresses, as in www.google.com to IP address 74.125.28.104. Google.com is a whole lot easier to remember than that IP address. DNS is assigned to port 53. Then we have RDP, Remote Desktop Protocol. It's used in Microsoft networks by the Remote Desktop Connection and Remote Assistance applications. They use RDP to make remote connections. It's assigned to port 3389. Next up is DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. This protocol is used within networks to automatically configure computers with the correct IP configuration, as in their correct IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, and DNS server location. This uses two ports. The DHCP server is assigned to port 67. The requesting client listens for the DHCP server's response on port 68. Let's move on to LDAP, Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. This protocol is used for accessing and maintaining distributed directory information services, as in Active Directory Domain Services. It's assigned to port 389. Then we have SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol. This is a protocol that's used to monitor and manage local area networks. Next up is SMB, Server Message Block. This is a protocol that's used to transfer files over a network, kind of like FTP, but the process is transparent to the user. The user really never sees SMB. It's assigned to port 445. Then we have CIFS, C-I-F-S, Common Internet File System. This is a protocol that's used to share files across intranets, internal private networks, and the internet. It's assigned to port 3020, and it has a lot in common with SMB. I mentioned Secure Shell earlier, SSH. Well, it's a protocol that's used to encrypt data traffic on a network. SSH is assigned to port 22. And finally, we have Telnet. This is a protocol that's used for remote access to systems. It is unsecure, but it is a bi-directional terminal service, and it does come in handy on occasion. It's assigned to port 23. That was a whole lot of ports and protocols. If you need to, feel free to go back through it. Do it as many times as necessary until you have these ports and protocols down. Now that concludes this session on common ports and protocols. I did an introduction to ports and protocols, and then I went over briefly some common ports and protocols. Now, on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I'm sure I'll do another one soon.